What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, with what's going to be a considerably shorter episode compared to last week, mostly just because it's a catch-up episode. Um, I only had a chance to watch uh, one new movie. Um, I finished a gameplay, started another one, so it's kind of that intermediary area where I'm planning also for later this month and into next month, so I'll get to that at the end of this episode. So to get the content part out of the way, um, I forget if I mentioned it last week, but I figured, I or I, it came to mind that I had never seen the movie Goodfellas, so I thought I would give it a watch to see what it's all about, it's, um, and kind of refresh my memory, because I had a few various memories of it scattered like scenes and things like that probably because I saw it on TV maybe I saw it started watching it and never finished it and stuff like that so I thought I'd watch it in full and get the full experience of the movie and overall it was pretty well done the weird thing about it was you have um Robert De Niro playing the Irishman which he would end up later playing or being the Irishman in a movie later um which I thought at first uh, the two movies might be connected when I first heard that, but as it turns out, Joe Pesci's character, I guess, dies in the movie in Goodfellas. So, um, and I think he was in The Irishman as well, which doing a qu quick look at the cast list, he actually doesn't look like he is. So, oh no, he is, never mind. So, now I don't forget, remember uh, for The Irishman if he was early on but looking at some stills it looks like he was an old man so it's kind of hard to tie the two together in the same universe but um that's neither here nor there um goodfellas in general for me look like a good precursor to a lot of the mob films that um like robert de niro and joe pesci would be in um notably uh a film like casino and the irishman so not a terrible film but um, you can see that it was a good basis and why the rest of the movies that came after were um, that much better because Goodfellas was um, good in and of itself. So if you've never seen it, I recommend it. Um, it is kind of a slow burn. It is a bit, or it is um, a lot of, for a lot of it, um, from the point of view of uh, Ray Liotta's character. So if you wanted a lot of these other characters, then you're going to get them mixed in and you're going to get, you know, their backstories and motivations and stuff like that throughout the fi um, film. And it's like, it's not, it was not terribly done. I actually didn't mind it. Not my cup of tea, but it's one of those things where at the time you can see why they focus on one character. But then when you get to movies like The Departed, you can um, present a movie from multiple points of view and tie them in together. So... Um, or you could even argue films like The Departed wouldn't have worked or may not have worked as well if you didn't have movies like Goodfellas. So I definitely recommend watching it. I'm glad I got through it now that I can cross now I can cross that movie off my bucket list of having seen that movie. Um, now, as far as gameplay goes, I did have a chance to finish Doom 3. So overall, it was a very good game. I like the finish, the fight with a cyber demon. We're left with a cliffhanger of uh, Betruger being in hell and turning into this weird flying gargoyle thing where his head comes out of the skeleton, which is kind of weird. But um, and then you have Doom Guy rescued by the other Marines. So overall, very well done. Um, my and I'm going to say gripe, but I don't really mean it in like in a negative way by my only issue with the um, game was having to switch between the flashlight and your weapon. So while I can understand that why people didn't like that, I did like that they acknowledged it and created the BFG edition where you can have the flashlight while using your weapon. It does um, die in the BFG version, but in the regular original version, you can use, use it as long as you want. Um, it doesn't really work too well with a mobile controller like the Kishi unless you have hotkeys to easily switch between weapons. Um, 
that works better on a desktop computer where you have a numbers key and you can easily switch between weapons. So scrolling through your weapons because, you know, for example, if you want to jump between your shotgun and the rocket launcher or the shotgun and the BFG really quickly, it gets kind of hard. You have to, and you can't really pause on the fly. It's kind of hard there. So you have to switch really, really fast or, you know, have to do creative hiding and things like that and adjust accordingly. So there are ways to get around it to make it a little bit easier, but things like that are a little bit harder on a mobile device or on a mobile controller. But overall, you can get through the game if you, you know, memorize the order of your weapons and you can easily get through them a little bit quickly, especially if you run around and switch so that you have a little bit of that duality going on. But overall, the story was decent. It does throw you off a little bit when you're into in this more detailed environment versus the original pixelated version of Doom 1 and 2. Um, my only real problem with the game um, is probably a little bit different than what most people would say in that the, while on one hand Doom 3 was revolutionizing what they're doing with the platform, they're creating a new platform to expand the capabilities of video games, the Doom franchise and all of that, we have a lot of levels that are centered around two places, notably Alpha Labs and Delta Labs. So you have like four or five levels of each of them. So it does get a kind of, it does get a little bit repetitive in both to the point where it feels like they could have narrowed down or trimmed down those levels a little bit and spent a little bit more time in hell or on the surface or um, had a little bit more, a few other levels or just compress them and not even include them. So instead of like the 27 or 28 levels or whatever it was, cut it down to like uh, maybe 20 or 22 levels. And I think the gameplay would have smoothed out a little bit. It was, It is a little bit more slower paced and methodical than Dooms 1 and 2, but it gets in the way of the flow of the game in general. So for me, it didn't really having that many levels of each didn't really add to it a lot of stuff that they did in the later levels could have been done earlier on so while so for me it didn't necessarily take away a lot from the game it did it does get kind of repetitive it's like okay you're in alpha labs one now you're in two three four five and it's like all right well how many alpha labs are we going to go through you know to the point where i'm looking it up it's like how many more are left and how many more do i have to go through um, this does carry over into um, Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil, which I also have started playing since I finished Doom 3 just to see what happens with Betrugra if they do finish it in that story and all of that. So overall, that ga the game is good too, but they do the same thing where they have like five or six levels in Erebus, which um, I did have a glitch when I was playing a couple of levels up until the boss fight. So. I lost the recording, didn't have the same game, but a lot of it is pretty repetitive to the point where you don't, you, you, if you play them back to back, you would think it's one long level. And I mean, because they're all labeled Erebus, it's easy to say that, okay, yeah, well, technically you are in the same area, but do you really need um, six levels in one place when three will do or two or four or something like that? So um, now that I'm done with that, it feels, um, a little bit better that now, you know, now that we're on to, I think I'm on to Phobos Labs. So now that I'm there, I mean, looking it up right now, it looks like they only have three of those levels. So, um, it works out a little bit level, a little bit better, but, um, we'll see. I mean, maybe they'll, maybe it's one of those things where it could have been done in two levels instead of one. And it does look like, Oh, actually, not three levels, but there's four levels in Phobos Labs because you go to the teleportation thing in the first one, and then you end it with again going back to revisit a teleportation to round out the teleporting because I guess a Hell Knight got teleported in, but you still need to go back to um, Delta Labs. Um, so things like that. I mean, for the first game, I understand what they were trying to do, you know, build up a new game. So it's understandable why they wanted to stay in fewer areas because it requires less design work and all that. They can reuse certain assets a little bit more and just develop the story. But then for like Resurrection of Evil, it feels like they could have, they did add some levels, but they didn't need to do that same pattern of having five levels in the same place when three would have done or something like that. So I'm still in the middle of um, Resur Resurrection of Evil, but I expect to be done by the next episode. So look out for that. But overall, it is a fun game. Um, there are certain points where you do feel like you're in a Doom level and it's cleaned up, it's more modernized, the graphics are better, the demons move better, um, and all of that. 
Um, the main downside there as well is that you do have a lot of levels that feel smaller and tighter and not convoluted but you have they're just more tighter and smaller so you you know you are in an underground facility but then at some point you realize well at one point do we go outside can we have more of a mix between inside and outside like we did in the original games or it just needed to be adjusted a little bit where you have bigger more expansive rooms to go through and make it feel expansive although you could also say that they're aiming to show the uh, confined quarters of a mars base and to which you would say you could say that yeah okay well they translated that well so with that being said um overall like i said the design was great you do feel you can feel a little bit claustrophobic after a while it is a lot of small tight spaces dark spaces if you're playing the original version that with a bfg edition they lighten up the levels a little bit you better use of the flashlight and all of that but um with that being said i'm still enjoying the games it's um it is definitely um they definitely do carry over the spirit of the original games. You do have to hide a little from time to time from enemies, use your weapons accordingly. Having the artifact in Resurrection of Evil is pretty nifty where you can have um, essentially what they call it hell time to theme it for the game, but it's essentially um, bullet time from Max Payne. Um, I haven't used the benefit of, I guess, the second boss fight add-on to the artifact, so I think it was looking online, it was like Berserk mode or something, so at some point I'll try that as well, see how that goes, but um, overall it's a good, they are good games, they are still fun. It is a little bit of a difference when you're switching from the original games and those mods into this. Um, I was going to look around for mods to see how... Um, how the if the how if there's any mods um i did try one to see the original doom game rebuilt in the doom 3 engine and it was okay i kind of didn't like it too much just because it felt like one of those um like late 90s games early 2000s games where they're trying to um redo the an original game and up convert it or something like that or like create a new game based on an old game and all that and it's, it's kind of weird so um it was too polished that's one of those things where it doesn't it the original actually would be better to stick with for doom 1 and 2 rather than you know cleaning it up and modernizing it or maybe just take out the pixel and don't really modernize anything else or something like that i don't know but still doom 3 is doom 3 was fun i really enjoyed it you can see how it's a good basis for doom 2016 and eternal so um once i'm done with um resurrection of evil i don't know if i'm gonna play another mod or i think i wanted to try out duke nukem 3d just to see how that is but um if you've never played doom 3 or resurrection of evil i do recommend playing them for an early recommendation for resurrection of evil um if you if you play these first and then go back to the original games it'll be kind of odd to see it go that way but um if you go in the other direction you can see a good progression between the stories or not progression these two stories, but you can see how they took the original games, modernized the graphics, and created a brand new story out of it. Um, the only final thought is that it does seem like Doom 3, even though it's a sequel to the games and a prequel to Doom 2016, it does actually feel like a good prequel to Doom 1 because, um, and you might ask things like, well, why don't you have, why don't we have um, the final the version of the bfg in doom one or why don't we have the artifact uh, well I, I can't say anything about the artifact because we're not there yet but for example we don't in um doom one it's a prototype bfg i guess but or it's like a bigger a chunkier version like a v a v1 instead of v2 so i would probably say that because of the events of um doom 3 the base is um destroyed you barely make it out that um, your weapons are left behind in your fight with the cyber demon so everything that was destroyed is left behind or you don't have it it's left in hell so you're leaving the base and all the research and technologies that were developed on the base have been destroyed so they're had they have to go to a prior version or whatever version they had before or they're only left with the prototype version of the bfg for example so that's why you don't have it in doom one and then your character has to go in and find the bfg take out the deep forces of hell because you've done it before so it works as a prequel there as well just graphics aside the stories i think generally still work no matter where you put it so 
I think that's another good feat that was accomplished with Doom 3 that you can place it really anywhere in the old franchise or the old versions or the new versions in the reboot and it still works as a good story for the Doom guy taking on the forces of hell defeating Hell Knights and the Cyber Demon. Why we don't know about the Spider Mastermind which I guess trites kind of seem like the predecessors to. So like the Spider Mastermind is like a evolved version of a trite for example. So things like that, like because of the events of Doom 3, everything else that we have in all the other Doom games are subsequent reactions by Hell to do all those various different things. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on social media by visiting the website. They're all linked at headphonesneal.reviews. There's also past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. As always, the Patreon has a link for um, supporting the show there so you can get early access to the episode, add free versions of the episode, a uh, link to the video version as well, and all of that good stuff at patreon.com slash patelin01. Um, and so as an update to what I mentioned at the top of the episode, so I haven't decided on when, but usually every year towards the end of the year and into the beginning of the following year, I usually stop, um, you know, doing podcasting and gameplay and uploads and things like that and kind of do a general internet break where I don't do any of that stuff. Oh, not, not that I don't do any of that stuff, but I'll do some random sporadic stuff, but I don't stick to any schedule. I don't release any podcast episodes and kind of take a few weeks off just to recruit, uh, recoup, um, regroup, um, rest up, come up with new ideas for the following year, hash out or finish hashing out ideas for things I want to do. And this year is going to be no different. So um, once I finish with Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil, so I anticipate that by next week, I'm going to probably watch a couple of random things between now and then. But at the moment, I am currently anticipating that Either the week ending the of December 15th or the 22nd will be the last uh, podcast episode for 2023. And I'm currently planning to resume either at the end of January or beginning of February. Um, mostly because I do have some thoughts as far as um, podcast stuff that I want to do in 2024. I've been thinking about it this year. I haven't had time to hash it out. Um, so I kind of want to spend the rest of this year and the beginning of next year just finish hashing that out, see if it's possible setting that stuff up. So for the rest of this month, if I do have a plan that I want to test out, then um, I'll probably release a couple of episodes just as like beta episodes on the feed. We'll release everything all together, but like basically same for every patrons and non-patrons so everyone gets that benefit but kind of just share share what i come up with for what i want to do for 2024 um it does it is a little bit related to going back to my roots of podcasting so that's all i'll tease for that but i kind of wanted to change up what i'm doing a little bit add to the podcast and make some adjustments to add and give more content for everybody so um those few weeks will give me that time to focus on that and do all that so that's kind of why i want to also just do gameplay videos for um, like Duke Nukem 3D. So just don't necessarily do something every day just as I have time. It might, I, I mean, it may still be every day, but I kind of don't, I'll, you know, take away that um, regular schedule of uploading something, um, you know, every weekday or something, just upload as I have time. So um, that's kind of the plan for the next few weeks or so. But yeah, like I said, the next couple of weeks, we'll still have podcast episodes for what I'm playing and what I'm watching and all of that usual stuff. Um, I am, as a bit of an update, I'm going to probably have one more video for my 2024 um, Knights of the Old Republic testing for gameplay. There's another mod that I was thinking of that I want to try out. I still have the game installed on my phone, so um, I want to try one more mod just to see how well, if it works and if I can use it with my other mods. So look out for that in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, I found the mod, I just have to um, set it up and test it out. So whenever I have a chance to do that, I will also do that. But that's going to be something for this month, just so I can say it's what was done this year to plan for next year. But um, that's also for next year is my next 20, my next gameplay for a KOTOR. So, um, 
look out for all of that. And just as a bit of a uh, side note related to Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil, just because of timing and uh, personal life and other commitments and things like that, you'll see in the notes on the playlist and in the individual gameplay gameplays that I do am playing it with God Mode turned on. I don't have as much time now. It's just coming on end of the year, so it's a bit crazy. So I don't have time to play the levels a couple of times um and you know get used to the level and then do the actual gameplay that i share on youtube so to save some time and not have to play the level at least two or three times i'm i just turn on god mode and i'm going through the game um to get through it play it i'm still playing you know i'm not doing anything with ammo um or anything like that it's just god mode so i don't have to worry about you know dying and replaying stuff over and over and over just go through the game and see how it is based on story itself so God mode is turned on in this case. So um, that's, I just want to be clear on that because I, I put it in the notes as well. Just because I did have a comment recently where someone um, didn't like it and wasn't their cup of tea that God mode was on. So I think I did reply to and I updated the um, notes in the video description as well that um, and I like I usually do. I think I forgot this time. But I try to remember to put in any video where I turn on God mode that that is what I did because I was having trouble with the game. I'm an amateur player and that usual stuff that in this case I had to turn on God mode. I, was, I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't making progress and that usual thing just to have that transparency that that's what I'm doing. So same thing here because of time commitments. Um, I'm not gonna spend the time or I don't have the time to spend to play the same level you know three or four times that extra couple of hours to get it played so I'm skipping ahead to that part and just playing the game with it on so I can enjoy the story get around explore the levels and do all of that stuff so that is all for this particular episode so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that um, and all the usual stuff that I mentioned earlier, everything can be found on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.